okay, after the second iteration of the outer loop. Then we look at 9, and we discover immediately it just goes right there. Very little work to do on that step. Okay? So we have exactly the same thing output after that iteration. Then we look at the 3. That's going to be inserted over there. 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 6. And finally, we look at the 6. That goes in there. 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9. And at that point, we're done. Okay? Question? Um, the array distance here starts at 1, yes. Okay? A1 to N. Okay? Okay, so this is the insertion sort algorithm, and it's the first algorithm, algorithm that we're going to analyze. Okay, we're going to pick out, pull out some tools that we have from our math background to, to help to analyze it. So first of all, let's take a look at the issue of running time. Okay, so the running time depends of this algorithm depends on a lot of things. Okay. So one thing it depends on is the input itself. Okay. So for example, if the input is already sorted, okay, then insertion sort has very little work to do. Okay? Because every time through it's going to be like this case doesn't have to shuffle too many guys over because they're already in place. Okay? Whereas, in some sense, what's the worst case for insertion sort? Yeah, if it's reverse sorted, then it's going to have to do a lot of work because you're going to have to shuffle everything over on each step okay, of the outer loop. In addition to the actual input, it depends, of course, on the input size. So here, for example, we did six elements. It's going to take longer if we, for example, do six times 10 to the ninth elements. Okay. So if we're sorting a lot more stuff, it's going to take us a lot longer. So typically, the way we handle that is we're going to parameterize things in the input size. So we're going to talk about time as a function of the size of things that we are sorting. So we can look at what is the behavior of that. Okay. And the, the last thing I want to say about running time is generally we want upper bounds on the running time. We want to know that the time is no more than a certain amount. And the reason is because that represents a guarantee to the user. Okay? So if I say it's not going to run, for example, if I tell you here's a program and it won't run more than three seconds, okay, that gives you real information about how you could use it, for example, in a real time setting. Okay? Whereas if I said here's a program and, you know, goes at least three seconds, you don't know if it's going to go, you know, for three years. It doesn't give you that much guarantee if you're a user of it. So generally we want upper bounds because it represents a guarantee to the user. So There are different kinds of analyses that people do. The one we're mostly going to focus on is what's called worst case analysis. Okay? And this is what we do usually, where we define T of n to be the maximum time 
on any input of size n. Okay? So it's the maximum input, the maximum it could possibly cost us on an input of size n. Okay? So what that does is, if you look at the fact that sometimes the inputs are better and sometimes they're worse, we're looking at the worst case of those, because that's the way we're going to be able to make a guarantee. It always does something, rather than just sometimes does something. Okay? So we're looking at the maximum. Notice that if I didn't have maximum, then t of n, in some sense, is a relation, not a function. Because the time on an input of size n well, it depends upon which input of size n. I could have many different times. But by putting the maximum at it, it turns that relation into a function, because there's only one maximum time that it will take. OK? Sometimes we'll talk about average case. So sometimes we'll do this. Here, t of n is then the expected time. Over all inputs of size n. OK? So it's the expected time. Now, if I talk about expected time, what else do I need to say here? What does that mean, expected time? I'm sorry? Raise your hand so I can see who's expected inputs. expected inputs. What does that mean, expected input? Um, so you expect that the algorithm will run for a certain time, and so you're assuming that you'll receive a certain type of input. OK, I need, I need more math. What do I mean by expected time here? Math. Over here. So you have to take the time of every input and then average them. You have to take the time of every input and then average them. OK. That's kind of what we mean by expected time. Good. Not quite. OK. That, I mean, you, what you say is completely correct, except it's not enough. Not quite enough. Yeah? Is the time of every input times the probability It's the time of every input times the probability that it'll be that input, which is a way of taking a weighted average. Exactly right. So how do I know what the probability of every input is? What's How do I know what the probability of a particular input occurs is in a given situation? I don't. OK, I have to make an assumption. What's that assumption called? What, are, what kind of assumption do I have to meet? I need an assumption. of right of the statistical distribution okay of inputs otherwise expected time doesn't mean anything because i don't know what the probability of something is in order to do probability you need some assumptions okay you got to state those assumptions clearly so one of the most common assumptions is that all inputs are equally likely. 